guys. Hello. <laughs> I we're here. We're <laughs> you know, Denny, we really should be getting better at this. <laughs> well, I know. It never, never happened. Twice a week, we're just always surprised. Yeah. Are we on? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we going to be doing today? Well, Kevin makes up these uh, scrap Ostr bags of ostrich. I, you know, I wouldn't even call them scrap bags. The remnant bags. They're, How's that? they're yeah, good they're piece big piece. bags. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we thought that maybe we would do a belt to show you what you can make out of remnants. Yeah, for sure. So this is our ostrich one. And um, our guy here that deals with all of the remnants that we generate from the shop, um, good old fellow named Dondi, he came in wearing this uh, ostrich belt that he had just bought at some Western store that is here in town. Mm. Not us. And uh, Tony thought that it was really cool. And so he was like, Denny, you should make one of these belts. So that's what we're going to do today. Yeah. So. I made one yesterday. It's a kind of a prototype. Yeah. That's what we're going to try and emulate today. Tony, you want to overhead me real fast? Mm -hmm. Thanks. So this is, it's got two panels set in between um, some tooled veg strips here, yeah. little accent pieces. Yeah. And you can do anything you want to with this stuff, yeah. but that you can see this ostrich, that's pretty nice stuff. That's not... Uh, it is. Yeah, look at that quilt. Yeah. That's, those are some, some good nice pieces. Quills and he got that out of this bag right here. No, Tony, go back to the overhead. What are you doing? <laughs> I want to look at this. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we've got to see so, this. So, guys, on Wednesday, I talked about my cool uh, Lego typewriter that I finished up here over last week. And so I brought it in today and... Um, just, you know, I've been, I've been walking it around. I haven't really done much work this morning. I've just been showing people my cool Lego typewriter. But in any case, this is, this is the thing. So it actually pushes, it doesn't, it doesn't type anything. It, that's just fake, but, but it does push a lever that makes a sound that sounds like a typewriter. So that's cool. Did you get a letter from Lego? Yeah, and Lego... It does. They send a little booklet of a lot of different languages. So wherever you are in the world, it probably has your language. I think there were like 50 copies in there of this cute little letter that just goes right in here to this little guy. Anyways, and it's green, which is the best part. Yeah. It's a neat deal. You know, you, you were talking about to Legos used to just be kids toys. And, and now she... There's, what, uh, 30,000 pieces there? Just 2,000. <laughs> just 2,000. <laughs> just 2,000. That's a bunch of little parts. It is. It was little, a lot of fun to put together. Little gears and cogs and springs and... Yeah. It's mechanical. <laughs> it's a neat thing. Yeah, if anybody, you know, Legos are cool for adults, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony, back to some ostrich. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just dump that out. Yeah. Show people what we So this here. is our ostrich remnant bag. It is two pounds. Kevin has been making these since the beginning of time. I'm really not even exaggerating about that, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so look at all these pieces. So yeah. we look at look at this. For Pete's sakes. Like I know that this piece doesn't have a lot of quill. It's got a little bit here, but my goodness, you could cut this up and put it's like if you're cool. gonna do patchwork, like this would be you know a lot of cool patches. Oh my god! That feels... piece that you're holding there, Liz, is the field. Oh, okay. So Tony took a section. Yeah, I'm assuming right piece here. Piece out of this, yeah. Look at this. This is how big this piece was. Yeah. So he took this section out of this piece, cut this whole field note journal, which is. A lot of quill. It's mostly quill, except for maybe right it's here. It's a tall quill, but I mean, it's still nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then it'll, it'll look good. I cut a mystery braid bracelet out of the side here, and then out of the end, I cut a little key fob that I was going to just do something today while Denny actually does a real project. So, but yeah, so this... That's kind of a real project. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, this this belt that I, that I made yesterday was out of this stuff, which... To me, it wasn't mm -hmm. the most beautiful, but after the belt was made out of it, it, and you turned, saddle out, soaked it. turned out, yeah, saddle soaked it, and it had it, it gained a little bit of color. Yeah, so and it, I didn't see this piece, or I would have used it. <laughs> man, that's man, that looks great saddle yeah. soaked. Yeah. My goodness. 
But, to, you know, you, you see something like that and you say, well, what good is that? Well, you can do a lot of different things with it. Yeah. Here's a full ostrich leg. Uh, yep, you get an ostrich leg with it. We've yeah. come across, but just look at these pieces. This is a really good one. So you get two pounds of assorted ostrich scrap and different colors. Um, and some of it might be, you know, a little stringy here and there, but my goodness, you could still get a couple of key bobs in there. Yeah, that's a nice black one. That, it is. That's pretty. Yeah. So these bags are really pretty great for the money. I think they're 25 bucks. Yeah. Does that sound about right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. The, the tag should be on there if you want to read the code on Oh, there is. Make nice wallet bags. So 76-101. 76-101 is the remnant, ostrich remnants. All right. All right. Well, I use I used this color yesterday, but then I saw this piece, this kind of a peanut brittle color is what oh, I would like call it. that. That's, that's a good when one. I worked at that Western store, we sold ostrich skin boots, and one of the colors was peanut, peanut. brittle. Oh. And this is about like that. But I think this will make a pretty well. It's got a lot of quills on it. I'm going to shove this back in here yeah. so that we have something to work. Yeah. But rather than go through the whole process, I cut all the parts yesterday. I did the tooling on them. These are going to be the three parts that I don't know if you could see this one when I'm coming out to do the belt. I'll show you the parts that are involved here. You've got your buckle shape on this end, which is this part. And then this little middle yoke here. And then our billet end right here. So, so <clears throat> I just used an inch and a half belt blank. Uh, but this is actually uh, five to six ounce leather. These these three uh, top overlays. Are. Okay, because we're and, lining it. Yes, because we're gonna okay. we're gonna line it. Actually, and actually, this uh, I used a Herman Oak belt blank. This inch and a half belt blank, and I split this down to about nine ounce. Okay. <clears throat> so along with this five to six ounce, you know, that's going to make a nice heavy belt. Mm -hmm. The ostrich skin itself is about probably two ounce, one to two ounce, you know, so it's going to have plenty of body. And this is actually the liner, but it's going to be the, what Main, gives it yeah. all the body. Yeah. But anyway, let's get started here. I've marked, uh, I've put all the, all three of the pieces on here and kind of marked their location. And then I drew around the ends, so I've got a little mark on this on this liner, if you can see. And uh, that's what I need to uh, cut. In between these is what I need to cut for the actual ostrich part. So let's put this down here. Let me look at it. Make sure there's a little hole right here, so I definitely want to miss that. So I'm going to put this. Oh, sorry. Nope, you're good. Right about here, that'll be perfect, right there. And I'm not going to cut this very smooth. I'm just going to use a sharp straight knife here. Yes. Just cut right through that hole. Yeah, and we'll save that for some other project. Cut another piece here. That'll be the center. All right. So, that other project might be part of this. Yeah. I was going to say, that's still a nice piece left over. We only need two pieces, though. I don't know what I was thinking. You do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There. Um, Devin asked if there was any special measure, measuring considerations for this kind of belt. Uh, no. no. Uh, the only consideration I take is, is generally when I size a belt, I go from the very tip to the middle hole, I, I go about seven inches. Okay. Right? And that's the hole you'll be wearing it in. And then say, I think I made this a 36 inch belt, but from that center hole to right here, which is the actual start of this buckle shape, Oh, because you right don't have here. to, that's not your, Yeah. you don't have to put a turn yeah. back on the strip. Yeah, this, because this is the turn back. Gotcha. Yeah. So from right here at the end of this liner to the, the seven inch mark is the length of our belt. So that's so a 36. 36 inch belt. I think 36 is what I made this. <laughs> I, I didn't have any specific guidelines to go by. <laughs> 
but you guys at home, if you're making it for someone, you probably have a guideline to go by. Right, so right. That's how you do it. Yeah, Devin, this isn't like um, necessarily one of those one of those metal sectioned belts where you're like individually creating your pieces right. that go between, where you have to kind of finagle those pieces to make sure and then take into account um, the those extenders. So what, yeah, the, what are those called? Those things. Those things that come <laughs> in the belt. So this is yeah. just... Yeah, this is just one full-length belt. Mm -hmm. You know, the liner is the we're whole length of the belt. making it fancy on the top. Yeah, the only thing that we're piecing is is uh, in between... Let me put it on here. That Ooh. Way people can kind of see. See what we're doing. Yeah. No. Nope. Uh, we'll have this. This. And then we'll have yeah. this. And you'll have that. Yeah. There so, it is, already done. Yeah, yeah. we're finished. <laughs> See you guys next week. <laughs> but anyway, we're ready to glue now. So let's get a piece of paper here so I don't mess everything up. And yeah, let's put this on here and kind of. You didn't bring me any glue. Well, I brought you a lot of glue. <laughs> <laughs> you brought me the glue. Yeah. This is. This is the glue master right here. Roll up my sleeves here. Call this my pirate shirt. I should start wearing an eye patch. Okay. And this is, you know, you the only thing you want to be careful of, you don't want to get any cement on the, the finish side of that liner. If you do, it'll rub off, but try Preferably not, don't. Try not to. <laughs> Do you want me to go all the way to yeah, the, your mark? Those pencil marks okay. are about the end of our our uh, overlays, and we call this an overlay. It's not an underlay. Uh, something that's underlaid will actually be underneath the. You'll have like a top everything. panel. Yeah. Like your filigree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the uh, this is actually going to be underneath our uh, our main finished part. And I forgot to bring it. While you're doing that, I'm going to go get the hair dryer. Oh, good call. Oh, Tony is supposed to ask to get one for in here. Uh oh, Tony, hurry. <laughs> Did you send that email, Tony? Yeah, it's all over. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Devin says you're going to do an eye patch next week since you're a fire. Yes. That would be kind of fun. So we got one belt already made out of this ostrich. I got a field belt that I cut out of. You got ear uh, key fob and wristlet or a bracelet. A bracelet. Yep. And we're doing another belt. And there's still a ton left. Out of twenty five bucks, we haven't even touched an ostrich leg yet. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't touched most of the ostrich just in that bag. It's a really, it's a great deal. I know, um, job, Kevin. yeah, he, he does good on these, but we, uh, we sell a lot of these ostrich remnant bags to our, our prison customers and they do some of the most beautiful patchwork purses out of it. Um, I've seen, I've seen several of those and, uh, you, you might even be able to get two patchwork bags out of out of one ostrich bag. I bet you could get more than that. As yeah. big as th some of these pieces are. Yeah. Wasn't it Tommy that made one for his mother out of... He did. He made... Of, a bunch of uh, remnants. Mm -hmm, a purse and a wallet. All hand-sewn. Hand-sewn patchwork, guys. That's impressive. Yes. <laughs> That's... That's impressive. It's like a Dolly Parton coat. <laughs> you know, she had that song, The Coat of Many Colors. And yeah. Her mother just quilted it all together, I guess. <laughs> okay. Does that look pretty good? Yep. That looks pretty good. Okay. This side should be pretty much dry at this point. You don't shrimp on the blue. I don't. I do. I get, I get her a good. That ought to be pretty good, so let's just make sure everything's covered. 
if you're using a thicker, you know, like if you're using a piece of shark or something, you might kind of trim it up a little to where it maybe doesn't go quite under or and dive I, that end. And I can even do that right now, which is I was but, I was going to. Yeah. I'll okay. I'm going to do it with a fringe Ooh. edge. But just because the ostrich is so thin already. Yeah. You don't. Yeah, there's not going to be much, uh, very anything very noticeable. But I'm going to take yeah. just this fringe edger here and just kind of dub those off a little bit. Wedge it out. Yeah, turn it around since I'm only one handed. <laughs> uh, do you have to finish the ostrich? No, it's done. I mean, you can finish it if you want to, but it's, it's a chromed hand yeah. finished leather, so you don't necessarily have to finish it. When we're all finished here, I'll probably go over it with saddle soap. But As we all should, all the time. Yes, yeah, all the time. Every <laughs> so time. Everything. Use saddle soap. <laughs> all right. Now, let me put our tape with this phone get out of the way. And get us a, something to cut on here. And I'm going to trim these two pieces down right now. You can use a straight knife if you want to, but... I like my handy little down knife. And this is why you want to cut it a little bit wide. It's it's really yeah. pretty terrible to try to match up edges. Yeah, and this thin stuff, it, it's, it's real stretchy. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a really tough time making it perfect size. When you think you've got it just right, it's going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> going to call you a liar. It'll be like, nope. You messed up. And Tony, I've got the trash can out here, but when I threw that piece, I missed it. It's on the wrong side. Tony doesn't mind cleaning up after us, right? No, he likes it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these pieces, this guy might be. Might even be big enough to use for another project. I don't know what. But isn't that cute? <laughs> Look at that. Just wrap it up, make a bracelet. Okay. Now then, this is the finished side. Oh, you okay. could line this and then make some earrings. You could. Some dangly ones. You could. All right. <clears throat> now this piece is going to go on something like this. So. And, but I want to stitch this on, so I'm going to do it before I put these uh, overlays on. So I'm going to make myself a little stitch line here, about an eighth of an inch. I'm measuring this exactly, <laughs> one eighth of an inch right there. And I'm going to go over to the machine and stitch this. So you're stitching that first? I'm going to stitch it first, and then I'm going to put the overlays on and stitch them on top. Gotcha. Ooh, watch out. Hair dryer. Thank you. <laughs> Would have had a commotion there. <laughs> Would have broke our only hair dryer. That's not good. I'm at the machine company. If you were wondering. I was wondering where you ran off to. I've got a, I put a piece of leather on here. I've already tested to make sure this is still stitching right, but I'm going to do it no more. Can't hurt to double and triple check those sewing machines. And that looks pretty good to me. Looks real good. I'm gonna run out and grab a thin piece of veg. Is that is that too thick? Yeah. Edge you got it here, so I'm gonna set it to this. Mm 
Denny, this other piece of ostrich that you threw away first is actually wider than that other one. Those are the earring pieces. I know. What I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> You know what everybody calls stuff, we were talking about that, it's not made of scrap. Really, in leather, there is very little scrap that's ever generated if you're willing to do this. Take your time and effort to make something. You can make something out of a pretty snappy piece of leather. Yeah, you really can. All right. Not this head knife is, is just so sharp. I tried to use it on the table and it just digs yeah, right in and you don't go anywhere. Yeah. You know, they used to use it on, they didn't have that polyboard years ago. They used to use it on wood. And uh, the saddle, first saddle maker I worked for, his bench was, was made out of uh, two two by tens, I believe. Okay. But uh, it was dished in the middle. He cut on it so much. And he would take a plane every once in a while and clean it up. Because uh -huh. it kind of splinter it, you know, when he cut Oh, that's terrible. But... Uh, it started out, it was full dimension lumber, a full two inches thick on each end. And in the middle, it was about three quarters <laughs> of an inch thick. Is that about the time he changed it out? Well, no, he never did change it. As far as I know, it's still there. Oh, really? I'm sure he's dead and gone now. He's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, let's trim this off. I know I brought a pair of scissors somewhere. Are you sure? I got a pair of clippers here. can't believe he never never changed it no he didn't need to <laughs> just... you would just keep planing it down cleaning it up i mean eventually you just run out of material well yeah <laughs> he made saddles for a long long time <laughs> so i put that on the wrong side why would you do that that's okay you're gonna hide it anyways yeah well, I can pull this through to the actual finish side because I'm going to cover this end up. So rather than have a little burned end on the finish side. Just put it under your project. Right. What is that, sir? Well, looky there. They brought you in here just to pick stitches? <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> you wondered why you were paying me, didn't you? <laughs> Now I know it's the big <laughs> stitches. Well, it could be worse, Benny. I'm not sure how, but it could be worse. He'd have to glue his own projects. That that'd be, uh, that'd be the pits. Uh, so I hear we're getting a new splitter today. Well, you heard what I heard, and we heard wrong. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, that it was still in Tennessee? It's in Memphis, yeah. Right. It, they had what they called... Richard came by, and he said, this is what you call an industry... Hiccup. I said, what does that mean? He says, it ain't moving. You ain't getting it. <laughs> it's a, That's okay. So it'll, it should be here Monday. Oh, just in time for Clayton to be on vacation. Yes. <laughs> to be out with a doctor's appointment to look at his wee little toesies <laughs> that he's had in a boot for two months. You and me, Rusty. That's us. Sunday. We got us. this. We got this. Yeah. For, so we're getting, we're getting our mid-size splitter, apparently, on Monday. So we'll have a, a big one. A mama one and and a baby bear one. <laughs> we'll have all three. I'm not sure how that works. We'll have all actually, three bears. Actually, we have four sizes. I, I know, but the baby baby one. So you'll have 15 inch, 28 inch, 
60 inch and 72 inch split. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. So. You, know, you know what Clayton said yesterday at our meeting? He said, we'll have to get them all set up so that you can run through one piece of leather from one to the other and just and just keep splitting it down. All right. <laughs> The you know, chain. They, they strap cut too at the same time. You know, Ooh. you could like cut them into strips and the whole nine yards. That'd be hard. Yeah. So for those of you making the trip here in the next few weeks, we can show you four splitters. We're going to show you what three. it looks like to order something out of Italy. <laughs> it takes a year to build. <laughs> Thread, burn. Thread burners. So what are we doing? Just keeping these oh. people entertained? Yeah. Why don't you come around here? Oh, okay. All right. I showed him my typewriter. Yeah, I'm seeing that. That's uh. That's cool. I'm very professional today in my white t-shirt. You look nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gathering we're doing something like this, maybe? Yeah, that's that's precisely what we're doing. All right. All right. Oh my gosh, visitor I'm number get two today? This is, this is quite So what Friday. are we doing? Working out of a scrap bag? This looks like ostrich neck. Yeah, we're showing them what it what you can do out of a $25 awesome. remnant bag. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, because this, uh, this is neck. Mm -hmm. You can. Did you tell them how you can tell it's neck? We didn't talk about the specific well, part of the animal. Well, we have to keep these people busy until, yeah, so until you know, Denny gets back. Uh, one, you can tell it's neck because of how small and close together the quills are. And then also, it always, to me, seems like it has a stretched look. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you can tell that it's neck by, by doing it. I'll get out of your way. I'm just like you're okay, would you finish No, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. You're doing just fine, Danny. You're Kevin, doing just Kevin, fine. would you like to say hi real fast? Hi really fast. Hi really fast. <laughs> Bye. Apparently he was looking hey. for Rusty because they're gone. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was going to see if he could. The questions on the screen would be really good ones for him. Oh. Man, Devin, you're just full of them today. How much? Full of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can get him before he runs away. Okay, now then, <clears throat> after all that, we've gone through all that, I forget where we were. <laughs> I think you were just going to attach your panel. Yeah, but anyway, the, <clears throat> this center panel, we want to do sort of like we if we were putting the name on, a, on the back of a belt. Because mm. we want that to be centered in the back, because otherwise it would be offset to one side or the other, which is... That's no good. Yes, funky. Yeah, we don't, we don't want funky. <laughs> I've already got a mark here where I measured this. But the way to do it, I'm going to go to my center hole, which was seven inches from the end. And I'm going to mark that on this. And then this is actually where our, uh, our buckle is. And I'm going to go from the center hole here that I've got marked to that buckle and, and split that. And right there in the back is the center of this belt. So I want to make sure I, I center this back part on, on there. And I forgot to burn it. You got the thread burner and then didn't burn all the threads. Oh, they're back. I, well, we, I brought them back because I had those questions that I thought would, they would have been good for. So I was like, hey, quit running down the hallway. Okay, so you want to ask your question? Go ahead, Liz. So Devin is curious. How much value does the ostrich add to a belt? All right, so Denny, let me ask you this. How much value does... <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you value your time at? So we're talking for Devin here, and we're talking to him. So if you were going to spend the time to do this all the way down the belt, I don't know if you can see it or not, tool, basically, all the way down the belt, Or you were going to add ostrich to it. So for me, I know my answer. What's your answer? Well, you asked what I valued my time at. You obviously value it at three dollars and eighteen cents. Inflation. No. Uh, <laughs> I think Denny deserves really, a salt shaker. <laughs> really, for for a, a basket weave belt like that, a full basket weave belt, I think I would probably charge probably one hundred twenty five dollars, one hundred twenty five dollars for okay. a full basket weave belt, All right, hand, so hand stamped. Now let me ask you this: If you didn't do any stamping on it, but you put a piece of ostrich strip all the way down and finished it, what would you sell that? The belt ostrich, for? if if you bought an ostrich hide, it cost what? Uh, Three four hundred dollars. Four hundred bucks. 
and if if I've got a piece an inch and a half, you would have to you would have to use a two inch piece to actually well, get the job done. Well, the other thing is, done. where do you have to cut it from? On the right, ostrich? you'd want it right off the back. If well, you were right out in the middle. Yeah, yep. If you were making an ostrich belt, so you're talking a lot of money. I would say, if I was going to price a full ostrich skin belt, I would price it at one hundred and eighty dollars. So the reason that I ask you that is, is because if you were to take that same belt strip and instead of hand tooling it, run it through a uh, an embossing machine versus doing a full ostrich belt. You see my point? Yeah. So the amount of labor that you put into what you're doing there should be thought to be similar to the amount of labor that you value your time to tool it, to carve it, to bevel it, to antique it, to do all the things, all the finish work that you're going to do. Exactly. Now, being you're doing what you're doing and you're using parts and pieces you still have a lot of time. Actually, I've got more time doing this than I would a full, just a plain ostrich skin belt because I can cut that strip and stitch it on and finish it. So you might charge even more for that. Okay, but the thing is, your material cost is way down. Right. You way have, down. You have, I bet, three bucks in this piece of ostrich. Yeah. Right. So now, all of that money is paying your time versus your materials. Yeah. And so that's the way that I look at it. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, is how many purple ostrich belts do you want to make? <laughs> right? So if you're buying a purple ostrich hide, right. and you make a purple belt for that little cute young lady that's starting into the rodeo world or whatever, yeah. how many purple items does she want out of that ostrich? You'll be because... a long time using the rest of that purple ostrich. <laughs> well, and don't forget too, that there's a big balancing act with what you're doing because <laughs> You know, the value is there, but like Rusty said, your cost of materials is so far down, it will give you the actual ability to get into your customer's hands a product that they might not otherwise be able to afford, taking your market a step up. Uh, and so you might be able to offer it to them at a little bit cheaper or cheaper. Sure. And you put more money in your pocket. Because even if you spend that four hundred dollars on that ostrich hide, which I think you guys are a little rich, I think we can probably get some for you know a little less three eighty five. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably that three dollars and eighteen cents. Right? But the thing is, is is even if you bought that from us, you're not putting that money in Springfield's pocket. It goes all the way down the line back to where it originated from. So you're putting money in twenty five people's pocket versus being able to put some of that money in your own pocket. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I don't know. For me, there's there's a lot of value in being able to use these bags. Oh, boy. I agree. A lot of value in being able to use those bags. I agree. You, no telling how many belts like this you could make out of that one bag of, of remnants. Well, right now you're getting a stupid ostrich leg in with every bag. I know. That's incredible. I know. He you makes them and he still thinks it's incredible. You want to know what's really even more incredible than that? Don't tell us. You bought more ostrich legs. Monday... 15 pallets of bootstrap is coming. Really? Whole semi-load. Wow. We, well, it, it was it was just as much to move them as a full semi-load as it was to just move them. But you got about just shy of 7,000 pounds of scrap coming. So if you could start making these belts a little faster. I need to hurry. <laughs> just every chance you get, okay. Danny. Every chance. Put them up to four bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I knew this would come in handy. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I think you you're actually doing something that's pretty cool because this shows you how to use every single piece that yep. you do have. Yeah. And even if you do have a purple ostrich that you're making a belt yep. out of, learning how to do stuff like this will allow you to use every single piece of. It. And I was just talking to our UPS rep about this the splitter that's coming, and I showed him how splitters work, and I showed him you know what what we were able to do. And how you could literally take a piece of nine ounce leather and run it through a splitter and it's like creating sheets of paper. And then each one of those other sheets, quote unquote, has its own characteristics, but can be used as fillers, as this, as that. And how no, and this was his comment, because I told him also about using uh, scrap in, in meat processing plants. Uh, they'll use veg scrap in their sausage makers to clean them. And they'll run them two or three times and get all the grease and all that. And then all they got to do is sanitize it. And and he's just, he looks at it and he goes, man, it seems like the leather world uses every single piece of the animal. We don't waste anything. They don't waste nothing. 
Right. And so that's one of the things that I think, oh, we got to go. She's got a head knife. I get cut with head knives every time. See you guys. See you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thanks for the raid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look forward in about three or four months. All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, now that we've done that, we're back here. I've centered this belt. I've got this pencil mark on this, and I've got a pencil mark on the center. So that's where I'm going to make sure I cement this. And I'm going to use a pencil just to mark the end of this. Right. And I'm going to go to here to this end. Liz, you're being really quiet. You've got a project going. Yeah, I'm, you know, it's, it's hard for me to think and talk at the same time. <laughs> it's like, like tying my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, since Liz is doing stuff, I'm going to glue this. Oh, I mean, I could, I could stop, but I'm making some earrings. Get going. I'm just saying hi. <laughs> Abby, Abby had to do a thing. <laughs> Forced appearances. That's what we like. Yeah. <laughs> now, just like we always talk about when you're you're cementing something like this. You want to make sure you definitely get your edges cemented well. That way later on they don't peel up and look like you forgot to glue them at all. Denny, are you going fishing this weekend at all? Uh, I don't think so. No, it's getting a little hot outside. Yeah, it's hot. Look at that glue pot. <laughs> What's that? Look at that glue mm -hmm. pot. It's a nice glue pot. Yeah, I thought it was pretty look, good. Look, look how fun this is. We had our normal question. What, is, what glue? What glue and what glue pot. And does the glue pot come with the glue? This is called Van Grip. And no, the glue pot does not come with the glue. We do have them available for you. At a slight extra charge. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Me either. But they are pretty nice glue pots. Since we got them, that's what I've been using. What else? What I like about them is that most of the glue is back here in this reservoir and it doesn't get air to it. Air is what thickens your glue up. So kind of saves me from having to thin it quite so often. However, I was on vacation, and when I came back... <laughs> you probably had a pretty solid glue pot. It was pretty solid, yeah. I do think I went to use it that Friday that we did the video, and uh, I picked it up, and I kind of twirled it around for a second. I was like, nope, that's not going to work, so I got carried. <laughs> well, when I got back, I, I couldn't hardly get the brush out. It was stuck so tight, but I, I just uh, poured it full of thinner, and uh, next day it was loosened back up again. Ready to go. Ready to go. I tell you what, Denny, I need to bring you all of my knives that I have at home and let you drop them. <laughs> it's, it makes a big difference if your knife is sharp. I mean, okay. I think this center one that I started with is ready to stick. Down. And I'll just go to this one since that works so well. It got me <laughs> excited. I'm going to do the rest of it. Well, I better put a little air on this one. You didn't grab any scissors, did you? Any scissors? Mm -hmm. I've got this. Those aren't. It's fine. <laughs> I, didn't I thought I. Nope, I didn't. That's that.
Tony, we need to get a full set of tools in here. Don't you agree? Let's see here. So W. Bradburn asked how the Van Grip compares to Barge as far as odor and durability. It, it's really pretty much the same. It's got great odor. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful to use in enclosed spaces. Just just get a really small room and just <laughs> open yeah. up your glue. Yeah. Find something to do that you really enjoy doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding. Around. Please don't do that. Well ventilated areas. <laughs> it is solvent based. Um, but it, it's very similar. So between Barge, Masters, Van Grip, um, they're they're very, very similar products. Yeah. Like it's yeah, one they work the virtually the same. Uh, yeah. A lot of people will say, oh, this is better than that. And the, whatever you have the best luck with is good. Exactly. You know, because they will all do you the job. Um, curious man picked up one of the glue pots and he loves it. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Yeah, they're nice. Uh -huh. And then let's hear, Jeff wants to know what tools you used when you stamped. Uh, this stamp is a, a Barry King uh, Meander stamp. It's called an Eiffel Tower, I believe. Well, I think they named it appropriately. Yeah. And this is the the little flower is just uh, one of our little flower border stamps. So we don't know what tools, but that's what they are. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Denny. <laughs> Was that a big help? <laughs> yeah. But... Those meander borders, they work in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. On that other belt that I did yesterday, I just used a, a little basket weave stamp and uh, this same border. I used it for a camouflage. It worked out well. Okay, I've got this glued on and I've got my... Uh, Stitch line mark, so I'm going to go to the machine again and stitch this up. This bell is really quite simple. It's simple. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot to it. I mean, I guess you didn't tool the sections here, but you're constructing everything else, so. Yeah, the actual construction of the belt is pretty straightforward. Just make sure everything matches up and covers are good. There's a great shot of the stamping on there. Yeah. So Barry King on your meander, your little Eiffel Tower meander, and then just one of our border tools. Our border, yeah. mm -hmm. So Tony could probably find those on the website or in the catalog, or just the one, the one tool. Are you drinking any coffee yet today, Liz? I mean, I'm drinking it on my own accord and not because I've been forced to, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she keeps suggesting me to do things. <laughs> <sighs> Denny, did they make you do weird things last week? Do what? I said, did, did the audience make you do weird things last week? Oh, the audience, they always seem to make me do weird things. <laughs> what's, what's Denny's thing, guys? Ask me weird questions. <laughs> They haven't had to use their channel points for it. Denny's is Denny Burns Tony, but that has already happened, mm. and he also burned Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Two for the price of none. Did you notice that on the backstage, Tony? I did notice that. Are you proud? <laughs> I'm always proud of you, Denny. <laughs> Matt Toaster said, well, at least I made it for the last half. <laughs> hey, Toaster. How's it going? We're glad to have any of you any time. Denny, on this bell, would you make a turn back with the Chicago screw so you could switch it out or sure just throw it up? I'm going to put uh, actually line 24 snaps on this one. Uh, it's, you know, it's a matter of preference. 
you know, if, if you're making it for yourself and you know what buckle you're going to put on it, and you're never going to change it again. Might as well we're in it on there if you wanted to. But if you're making it for someone else, then you aren't sure. Or if you're just making it for on spec, you know, hopefully to sell to someone, you definitely want to make it where they can change the buckle out. The hardest part for me when I do stuff like this is staying out of my own way. <laughs> What's going over there, Liz? Oh, I'm just painting edges. Just like a little Finici edge paint here in the dark brown. So I'm using our little roller paint applicator and I'm just making these edges look nice. Or just different than they were before. <laughs> they may or may not be nice. Not nice, but at least they're different. <laughs> okay, green. Can't be handy, at least be handy. There you go. malfunctions there. Always exciting. That always thrills me. Okay. Pull some thread here. Let that edge paint dry. What, this really waxy ostrich that Tony glued up here. You don't have to worry about getting a little bit over the top edge because it just wipes right off. And then the last thing, I clicked out this little mystery braid bracelet. So while you click and burn, I'm just nice. going to braid it up. Let's see what you did over there. Oh. I got my little very nice. Yeah, I got my key fob. Nice. Edge coated. Wow. Tony, I was thinking we could give we could give this and my bracelet away, and whoever wins it, I could put a initial concho on the key fob and whatever their name is. Oh, nice. You want to do that? Sure. I don't know. I'll do this. I'll do this mystery braid thing. If anybody's well, probably. I'm probably gonna make that uh, field note. On the after show. The after party. So that'll probably be given away as well. Ooh. I think Stacy's gonna. Stacy was talking about making choke bags. I don't know yet. He doesn't know. It's Friday. He's gonna do something. Okay, so mystery braiding for those of you that are interested. This is just a three strand. You flip it through the right hand side. 
you braid three times, two, three, and you can do this for whatever amount of strands you have. You always want an odd amount of strands. You flip it through the right hand side, you braid how many ever strands you have. So if you have five, you braid five times, three, three times, and then you flip it through the left hand side, and then you'll create like a little braid down at the bottom that you'll move to the top, and then un braid you, three more. And then you, yeah, and then you flip it again, you braid three more. Yeah, yeah, Denny. Three, two, three. I think that was three. You flip it. No, nope, that wasn't right. I need one more. Boom. And then you flip it, and that's it. And then you move it three, two, three. This one's curling. And then I think I can get one more set. So flip, one, two, three, flip, and braided. So you just go as far as you can. Exactly. Right? Yep. You braid three and, and untwist it. Yep. So that one. Four or five and untwisted. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that's done. Nice. Mystery braided. Okay. Okay, grab your coffee. Grab my coffee. Because I'm going oh. to the burnishing machine. He's going to be oh, lovely. You probably ought to grab your typewriter, too. <laughs> yeah, let's not get leather dust in there. That would be awful to clean. Maybe uh, I'm actually going to put it over here. Oh, I need to cut that off. Trim this end. Quick. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start at this end, I think. Oh, you have to make sure it's oh, all the way out. I to plug it in. Or that, that too. Oh, the extension cord. Um, Tony. <laughs> Did he make the power jump? Here, I'll put my finger on one end of the plug and I'll stick my finger in the socket. You think that'll work? Yeah, it <laughs> definitely it'll work. <laughs> Something will work. I thought it was plugged in because I saw this other cord earlier and I didn't worry about it. Um, I'm trying to do here. Make the edges flush. And I'll go back to the edge beveler. Bevel all my edges. Burnish them a little bit. This is dusty. Yeah, it is. Can you get a dust collector in here, Tony? <laughs> sure. Whatever you want, Denny. <laughs> well, that's what we need, by golly. saying they are. <laughs> gonna, That's all I want. <laughs> Good gracious. That is dusty in here. Yeah. It's just dusty over there. All right. We're going to move this to the other side of the room so that Tony can enjoy the dust particle. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, oh, hey, thanks. bevel the edges on the back side of this and I'm going to use it. This is unhappy for my contacts, guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm using a number two common edge beveler. You can use whatever you want. The number two is a pretty good size for a belt, I think. Yeah, it makes a nice, yeah. nice beveled edge. Yeah. Hey, Liz. Yeah. Those iridescent paints. Uh huh. Is there any? That would give kind of a bubble or a iridescent type of, I'm not iridescent, um, a oil slick type of look. Um, 
I mean, they all should be decently glossy. There is, Fenichi makes like a high gloss edge finish. So like after you get done with your color, um, if you put a few coats of color on it, you can go back with their high gloss edge finish um, and just make it as shiny as possible. I don't, I don't, that, that's probably about as close as you're going to get. What? Oh, whoever did that, we're not friends anymore. What happened? <laughs> I have to drink coffee. <laughs> Hi, guys. I hate you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go away. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to fire everyone in this room this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> if, you would just, if you would just never drink coffee your entire life, I'd be a problem. Okay, Kevin. I think, I think my whole life revolves around coffee. <laughs> that did it. That did it, guys. <laughs> all right, I'm all beveled. Now I'm going to burnish the edges and I'm just going to use water. Glycerin and saddle soap. Water and saddle soap. I'm going to set a line 20 snap. I hope. Let's see if we can get it all in one shot. Perfect. Oh, yeah, there's that Gilder's paste, too. That Gilder's paste for the oil slick type of stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't... I don't, I've used it on leather. We did it on a field note journal. Oh, do you mean like the iridescent? Is that what you're talking about? Not, okay. Sorry, I was thinking about shine. Um, yeah. Okay, that's for the point. Yeah, that's, I, you know, I haven't looked at the Gilder's Paste colors in a long time, so. I don't remember what video that was. I'll go find it. Wasn't it a field notes journal that yeah, we the, did? Oh, you did the, the gold one. one. And yeah. The black and, and gold. Black, yeah. yeah. We did the black I, Fenichi water stain on it. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember what the name of it was. We do so many videos. Two two a week, guys. It was the wasn't block. it a bronze of some sort? African bronze, maybe? Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, I just don't know. Um, I have to look at the colors and see if there's any of the colors that do kind of like that peacock color array. Yeah. When you're talking about beads, that's called Aurora Borealis. Like it's like if you look at bead finishes and you see any like bead color that's listed with an AB after the color, that means it's got that that look of that finish. I, I don't know if I've seen any... Shafts, the iridescent, or the uh, Gilder's paste that we used on leather. Okay. I don't... Is there... I guess you could just kind of make it up. <laughs> like, use like different colors and model it yourself. Oh, I made a belt this weekend that had... a belt that I brought in yesterday, Denny. Oh. It was like a snake emboss, and it had that Aurora Borealis finish on it. It was cool. It was pretty I neat. I like that belt. I've never seen a piece of leather that color. But that came Melissa, from a tannery, so. Melissa had something yesterday that she showed me. It was a heat-activated dye of some sort. Did you see that? I didn't see it. She she talked about it a little bit. I didn't actually see it in action. I'm going to bring it to the meeting on Thursday. Ooh. Uh, Zach's working on more examples. He's going to do it. It's cool.
Right. Now, saddle soap. And saddle soap. So it just kind of always gives everything a mellower look. Well, we always want our, our leather work to be mellow. Yes. <laughs> By all means. Ordinarily, I'd oil this on the back, but since I don't have any oil in here, saddle soap just it for now. saddle soap back. Denny, what is your opinion of the Cobra Class 425, the King Cobra sewing machine? So it's, I'm not familiar with it, I don't think. It just has a, it's like, it's oh, got like a 25 huge, yeah. inch throat. Uh, I mean, if okay. you need something that needs that long of a throat. Yeah, it, like if you make tents or something like that. I, I mean, I wouldn't know what application would need that long a throat, but that's uh, definitely what it would be made for. I would I would be willing to bet it's exactly the same machine as a class three or a class mm -hmm. four. It is. Other than the throat length. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, it's got it's got the same capacity as those other ones. So really it, it depends on what you're making. I've seen a couple of those. I think we actually have one out on retail. It's really long. It has a really big footprint. Um but that would just come down to if you need that much throat length for whatever you're doing so it's 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 huge the machine is huge <laughs> it's huge man it is okay i'm gonna punch the holes in in here would you like a polyboard well I, i've just got a oh you just have punch. a no you don't need I'll a polyboard spring punch and i'm gonna go seven inches from the tip for my center hole and i'm gonna make my holes in it about an inch apart leather dust all up in my eyes. I am so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I forgive you. It was better than Wednesday with Clayton. He had to sand a lot and it was it was a lot in here. <laughs> uh Devin asked what antique did you use? This is a medium brown. Okay. And did you use the gel or did you use the paste? Uh, this was the gel. Okay. I used the I forget what it, oh, I was doing another, the a plate for one of those carbrites the other day, and I used that Sheridan Brown paste, which I hadn't used in a long time, and I really liked it. I'll probably use it a lot more. When I get on a kick, I do stuff a lot, <laughs> you know? I really like the Sheridan Brown. It's one of my favorites. I lost track of my holes there. All right. Now then, let's put a buckle on it. What size hole punch are you using? Eighth inch. We want silver or gold. All right, guys. Tony, should we do a vote? So we've got a gold horseshoe shaped buckle and then a silver, a little bit more modern-ish rectangular design here. And this thing is hefty. That's solid brass. Yeah. Yeah, that is solid brass. Anything? Anybody? Anybody? It's hard to see. Which one do you like? I like the gold one. I do too. Okay. Decision made. And, uh, the only reason I needed to know oh. was because we got a set of snaps. Oh, yeah. Set of snaps. A couple of snaps, actually. Here, you can use my granite. Okay. Let me punch some holes here. That was the consensus. There has been no silver. Oh, there's one silver by Sean. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Sean, you lose. <laughs> wow, Denny's <laughs> burning everybody today. <laughs> no, that was, I'm just being honest. <laughs> Just letting him know, just in case he didn't, he hadn't gotten the news yet. <laughs> uh, 
I love really good with black hardware. Yeah, that's, that's funny for me. All right, don't tell Kevin I'm doing this. I won't keep a word. I'm using a hammer. On... I have a mallet right here. I know. Okay, well, you do you. <laughs> it's my tool. I can use a hammer if I... Exactly. That didn't work. Oh, you gotta you gotta get the other little stubby set. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna use. Pedro said Denny got his raise today, so he can tear up his tool. Uh, yeah, I got my raise. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. All right. What did I do? Oh. Charles Abbott said like, you should request a shop back with the hair dryer. We've got a couple of those. I just need to unscrew that thing from the table and get it out of here and then we'll put you in it. Yeah, that too. We just won't finish edges in here. That is, that is a difficult thing. Um, oh, this was just a little water. Because really, edge finishing is like, that's that's like the most important thing in leather work. Yeah. It's your edges. Yeah, you can mechanically, you can do everything just, just perfect. But then if you don't put a nice, to finish it nicely, it just doesn't work out. Yeah, it's just not, just not the same. Uh, what size posts are you using? Post? Yeah. These are uh, regulars. Uh, in the gold we don't carry a short but if 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 i had my if i could do it the way i wanted i would use a long post on this thick part and a short post on this thin part you could always grind them down i could i could have gone over to our grinder and made more dust and, <laughs> yeah and ground these a... down but it worked like it was so did you use eighth inch on all the holes you poked in there yes yes even for the buckle holes and just in case you guys didn't see that, Denny likes to use a peening tool to set his to set his snaps. Yeah. So he uses a uh, a tubular rivet setting tool, which is the little peener that looks like it's got a little flower on the end. Um, but he uses that, and it actually sets snaps yeah. pretty well. Yeah, you can see it there. Uh, the one up oh, there on Liz's side. Yeah. But and for the for the male post, I I ground one of these down. I actually. Put, uh, I take, took it to a grinder and uh, ground it down. Anyway, there we go. Oh, lay it back down. Look at that keeper. Yeah. Put some fancy lines in the keeper. Tony, I wish. Sometimes you just can't stop. You got to keep going. You know? <laughs> look at that. Looks pretty good with gold, I think. I think it does too. So now we've got a silver one and a gold one. Silver and gold. All right. Uh, I should use the bigger hole punch for the buckle holes, though. He needs a three sixteenth. Yeah. For the buckle hole. Just waller them out. Yeah. I just. <laughs> favorite word now. Isn't it? it is. That's one of my favorite Denny words. Gotta waller it out. There we go. All right. Pretty nice ostrich. I think so. That looks pretty snazzy. Do you prefer those over Chicago screws? I do myself. They're easier to change. 
Chicago screws can get to be a bit of a bear to like get them out. So yeah, and getting them threaded a lot of times they're so small. You know, uh, yeah, my big old clumsy fingers I can't hold on to them. They're slick too. Right. I know a lot of times we'll use our pound up board and you like push the belt into it with the yeah. the head of the Chicago screw and then screw down the back yeah. and that at least gives it some friction to to grip onto. So, but you know, a lot of people say they don't like a snap because the snap comes undone. But if you set the snaps well. They aren't going to come undone. No. No. They should be good. We've been putting snaps on belts for a long time. Yes. All right. Can anybody tell Denny Clayton threw his, threw his number? Yes. I, he may have told Denny actually, after the video. Actually, okay, I've got a story. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the shop yesterday morning, and I thought, what in the heck happened to my number 12 setter? And I swore... The guys over in the shop next door had taken it. Uh, so I went over and stole theirs <laughs> oh. and put it in, in the slot on my bench. And pretty soon Clayton came over and said, here's your number 12 setter. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Denny, we had a fun time with that on Wednesday. I heard. Yeah, it got it got stuck real good. <laughs> look at this number 12 setter. And then, and then that's the one Tommy gave us to replace it. You have to look in. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a burr inside the hole where you drive the the burr down yeah, onto I bet the river. Tommy did it. <laughs> How hard did you set it? Yeah, yeah. We had a, we had a good time attempting to set copper rivets the other day. Well, all right, guys. So that's that's We're an overlay ostrich belt. Overlaid, yes. Overlaid ostrich and belt. And using remnants, and yeah. we we use the remnant, and then we use the remnant off the remnant. Yeah, right. we, we sure did. I made I made key fob, a bracelet, and a pair of earrings. Yeah. So what are we giving away? A key fob and a bracelet and a pair of earrings. <laughs> are we giving away a bell? Sure. Who's a size thirty six? By a size thirty six. Four thirty seven or thirty five. It is. Let's give away this one. Okay. Give me a bolt of them. Dondi probably wants one too. Oh right, we did promise one to Dondi. I mean, we can make another one. Look at that scrap bag we got left. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, this will be Denny's new job. It's just making ostrich belts. Yeah, actually, this one's a, a thirty-seven. A thirty-seven. Yeah. What do, we what do we got here? Well, Tony, how do you want to do that? Michael Evans is a thirty-two. That one's a Matt thirty-two. Matt is a thirty-four. Didn't we stitch the ostrich? Didn't we stitch it? We did. Yeah, we sewed it. That was the first yeah. thing that Denny did. He got it glued down, and then he sewed um, these sections down so that your stitch line went under your overlay panels here. See? So. Everybody's commenting their belt sizes now. Hey, Carl's husband is a 36. Sean's a 36 is good. All right, we have to figure out which one Dondi, Dondi wants. Because we, since we used it off of his belt, we got to figure out which one he wants. So they're about the same size. And by the way, if you wanted to even zhuzh these up a little more, you could, Whoa, you could put some, you could put some conchos on. Oh right, yeah, these panels before yeah. you before you sew them down, you could you could attach conchos or put conchos, I guess, in the middle of your ostrich. Although that's a little thin. Yeah, you'd want to go through the whole belt. Yeah, you just waller out a nice hole and zhuzh it up. Waller it out. Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll figure it out. Okay, and maybe we'll even we I mean we got an extra scrap back. Maybe we make another belt. For somebody else that wins, and then we can send send off some ostrich remnants. We'll we'll do somebody. something, guys. We got a table full of giveaways right here. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I think that's all for today. I'm getting hungry. Me oh, too. Liz, did you see did you see what I put on the top of the thing? I've been ignoring it the whole time. <laughs> so. Okay, so wait, Stacy didn't even. So Stacy and Chad usually come up with the the flash sales that happen. Uh huh. And you and I come up with the videos, except for when it's Denny, and then Denny and I had just been thinking of it. So Denny and I kind of knew what was happening, but nobody else really knew what we were doing with a, a belt until um, yeah, until today. Until today. Yeah. Gotcha. So it looks like next week, on Tuesday, for those of you guys that um, get our newsletters, every Tuesday we put out a flash sale. 
um, that's just a regular item that we put on sale just for that day. And so on Tuesday, it's going to be, is it all belt links? Uh, no. No. Nope. There's two belt buckles on there, and then... There will be a belt blank. And then the buffalo belt blank, I believe it's the black one, inch and a half, will be on sale. Okay, so we'll have a buffalo belt blank on Tuesday on sale. Oh, okay, hang on. W. Bradburn, sir, sorry. Uh, Denny, he was actually the one that got that black and gold field belt. Mm-hmm. So, pin. So speaking of Barry King stamps, do you by chance have any to compare to them uh, less expensive options like the Meander? Sure. We I mean, we sell several Meanders ourselves, you know, uh, that work really well. Uh, most of his tools are just different than everybody else's. Yeah, he know? comes up with his own patterns, design. So You know, but, but as far as this... Uh, this Eiffel Tower, we've got one that's very similar to that. Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, uh, it's not it's not exactly the same, but you'll get yeah. you'll get the same kind of idea. Yeah. So, but but you know, Barry Tool Barry King uh, sells a lot of tools, and and they're pretty expensive. So you've got to you've got to be serious, you know, to yeah. buy his tools. You know, they do a very fine job, but that's not to say that someone else's tools don't do just as well. That's right. All right. Well, we'll be back next week on Wednesday doing something. We'll figure it out. But we're going to go have a fun weekend. Yeah. 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 We'll see you guys next week. You guys take care. Bye.